じゃあ死にな As we look back at what a year 2022 has been, I'm sure there's one thing a lot of you regular viewers have in mind. It's all about the action, and the way videos on battle anime have done exceedingly well on this channel prove that. Honestly, the same thing's on my mind too. 2022 has given us a lot of good action shows, but amongst the tens and hundreds of fights, there are some that stand out much more than others. So today, that's what our list is about. It's time for me to start the road to the end of the year by looking at what I think are the top 10 fights of 2022. Mob Psycho has always set a gold standard of excellence in animation, to the point where its other perks somehow got pushed to the wayside. I'm not saying this is completely true, but at times, it seems like that the writing and character development in Mob Psycho just doesn't get talked about enough in favour of the animation. Mob Psycho truly is an amazing anime, and it's not so often that a show can quickly shift your mood from being all eyes on screen from a fight to ripping your heart out with dramatic moments. But they did that this season, featuring a side character I'm pretty sure not a lot of us cared about that much before hand. But let's not take anything away from the fight now, shall we? It's nothing short of amazing to see Dimple go all out in this way, and it's a slugfest that we typically don't associate with Mob Psycho. A side character fight that stole the show is the best way to describe this. We proceed with Attack on Titan's fight involving everyone against the Jaegerists. Did you really think that once the primary Titans had been dealt with, the best of AOT had passed. Well, a few people seem to think that way, given the reception to this final arc, and I am inclined to agree. But at the same time, the final arc also gave us some cool fights like this one. First, the Titans are still here, and while they've been taken down a peg, the addition of the whole human-to-human -human combat aspect more than made up for it. For all the complaints that the final season of AOT got, you can tell they didn't skimp a single bit on the animation and the quality control for this episode. The fighting is just so fast and intense, and it's something that brings back memories of the old days back when the whole world was still feeling the shock and awe of this anime's smashing debut. I'm not sure if this can hold a candle to something like Season 3's climax, but it sure is worth a mention due to how awesome it is. With the big titans out of the way, I wouldn't blame you if you think that the AOT hype would have subsided a bit, but this whole sequence should prove otherwise. The titans may not have retained the threat level they had in the series' first half, but they sure pulled their weight in this battle. <laughs> For our next entry, we look at Team Ruby versus Nightmare Blake. Ice Queendom has been a mixed bag for a lot of people, including me. Personally, I like the direction they did with the series, but that's also because I wasn't such a huge fan of the source material, and therefore didn't have much of a passion for it as the hardcore fans do. However, what I can tell is that in terms of battles, Ice Queendom has been hitting the right notes, and my favourite amongst those fights is the one against Nightmare Blake. There's something I really love about these ensemble fights, mainly due to how teamwork shines through, and you can clearly see how each member of the team has a role to play. Amongst the many action sequences in the series, this has become my favourite by far. In addition to a decent fight choreography, you have the emotional stakes at play and the very catchy music. Hey. Oh, and you see, likes, comments and all sorts of engagement help the channel grow and make this video do well. So if you're liking the video so far and want to see more of it, be sure to drop a like and leave a subscription to the channel. Thanks, and I hate to hold you up any longer, so let's proceed. Looking back at it, Princess Connect did make one great impression on me, so let's feature it with this fight right here. Hi. 
It's rare to expect a gacha game adaptation to have this much care and budget given to it, but as we've seen as the season went on, Psy Games really threw in a lot of chips at the anime adaptation of Princess Connect. The second season has vastly improved on the first one, adding the more intriguing plot and more action to the mix. The final battle against Kaiser Insight may seem quite simple, but it's a fight that you'll enjoy a lot more once you get the context right. It's the culmination of Pecorine's storyline that was briefly teased in Season 1 and fully explored in Season 2. Seeing her stand up and take responsibility as the true princess and take it to one of the most despised villains in its season was a thing of beauty, both figuratively and literally. The anime team used much of Season 2 to show off their animation chops and this fight is no exception. It's a pleasing climax to a show that has surpassed all expectations coming in. Even if you've watched Season 1, Season 2 is such a huge change of pace in a good way, it's hard not to get goosebumps on scenes like this. Next is Shigaraki vs Everyone. My Hero Academia is still going strong after all this time, and if you're craving for more intense action like you've seen in the series' climactic fights, then I present to you the much-awaited Shigaraki fight. Shigaraki has sure built a reputation for himself through the years. It's not like he was just some random side villain when he was introduced, but he really rose through the ranks these past seasons, culminating in a triumphant run last season. Now, with all the hype he's built, he finds himself taking on Endeavor and the heroes. Watching him take on Endeavor seemed like a titanic showdown that's just destined to happen and it didn't disappoint. It's just one of the fights where you can really feel the intensity emanating from the two fighters and having Deku and friends in such close calls adds so much to the tension. If you're still not convinced that Shigaraki has what it takes to take the mantle of the ultimate villain, then this fight will surely change your mind. How could we not feature Chainsaw Man? Especially with the banger of a battle they gave us with Denji versus Leech Devil. Isn't that a rather minor fight in the manga? Well, yeah it is, but with the way the anime team produced it, anime onlys wouldn't know. They truly poured their hearts out in presenting this fight the best way they could, and the results are glorious. Sure, the insane action is something that we've all come to expect, as this is four episodes into the show. That doesn't make it any less good though, and this one's pretty much on par with everything we've seen so far. Personally, I praise the fight more for the voice acting and how it really conveyed the character's state of mind. You can truly feel Denji's madness as the fight goes on, and it's a far more effective way of getting us to know his character even more, especially in an aspect that some people feel was a bit overlooked in the anime. This battle gets a mention here because of how the anime took this relatively minor fight from the manga and elevated it to new heights. It's one of the best things that I credit for the success of shows like Demon Slayer and Bleach, and looks like Chainsaw Man is quickly joining good company. Cool. <gasps> Summertime Render makes a list with the fight versus the shadows. a show in recent memory that so beautifully portrays determination and resilience from a ragtag group of people who put everything on the line, then it's Summertime Render. I don't know if a lot of you share my opinion, but I think this is one of the best shows to utilize the time loop system, and the way it transitioned from some murder mystery to pure thriller action is nothing short of beautiful, with this fight marking a huge turning point. An entire episode of Summertime Render never fell as short as this one, with the human team combining their skills to outplay Shide and Haine, and inching ever closer to victory. In addition to the quota for action being filled, it's still filled with the various mental gymnastics and strategy that I've come to love the show for. Shinpei and Groot were never going to beat the Shadows, but with enough strategy and learning thanks to his loops, they were able to finally take one from the seemingly unstoppable enemies. Summertime Render is a strong contender for anime of the year for me. No joke. Perhaps this fight would encourage you to try the show out. <laughs> You should leave
with Bleach Fever being alive once again, I feel like part of me has been transported back to the 2000s. But does the original Bleach series have a fight as blazingly as intense as this one? For so long, fans have always wondered what Yamamoto's Bankai really is. Sure, he's technically the strongest amongst the captains, but his powers are a bit too simple considering all the broken stuff we have in Bleach, right? A Bankai that just makes more flames? I mean, that sounds lame. That is until we finally get to see it in action, though. Turns out, it's not just fire, but fire utilized in various ways, all modes being mind-blowing in their own right. Okay, so technically this isn't a fight, more of a big-time flex moment if you ask me. So there's something I can consider when the next volume of that comes out. They literally made an episode of Yuha getting completely annihilated. Then the plot twist drops. <laughs> One Piece is back at it with the fight against Kaido making the list. When has a One Piece fight gotten you this excited before? Seriously, I haven't felt this excited for a confrontation before, and I've spent a good part of the past decade watching some One Piece. Make no mistake, in the whole gallery of One Piece villains, there's no one that got me as excited about the prospect of a climactic clash as Kaido did. And the fight shattered my expectations too. I've read the manga of this part, but seeing it animated and with sound just made everything so much better. The whole thing is just insane, and it's like the One Piece team put in their 120 20% for this fight. We've seen some well animated battles before, but this one just hits so different. The fight is filled with a lot of epic moments that you just gotta watch to believe. It's also amazing to see Kaido's endurance in full display here. I mean, the guy spent so much time fighting back to back to back. It's a great payoff to one of the most built up villains in the series. Wrapping up this list then, we have Team Tengen versus Daki and Gyutaro. Half a season as a fight? Preposterous. But that's just what Team Tengen versus Daki and Gyutaro is. A long fight drawn to encompass half a season and every bit and segment just as exciting as the one that came before it. Looking back at it, having half the season be an extended fight might sound insane, but it sure didn't feel like it when I was watching it. Especially if you compare it to the Kaido fight, which is probably a year long fight. But while the battle's ongoing and people come in and out, we get some side points running in the background while the action rages on up on the surface. Classic Demon Slayer goodness all throughout with the well paced fights, the still astounding animation of moves and the excellent presentation make it easy each moment as tense and gripping as they should be. You just can't get off your seat while eagerly awaiting the result of each action, and that's what makes battle shonen like this so fun to watch. I also would like to point out how Daki and Yutaro make such an amazing combination in terms of strength and powers that I spent time wondering how the heroes would defeat these two. They're not some super lumbering invincible villain of doom, but the fight against them is a puzzle that makes the whole battle so engaging. So with that, we wrap up the list. I wonder how you'd rank these fights against each other. Make sure to share your top three or five in the comment section down below. Your help and support will also go a long way in helping us make even better videos, so the team would deeply appreciate the likes or subscriptions that you can give us. Well, that's it for this list. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.